Yeah, let me start by saying good morning to all of you. Uh, and then to say that um, in keeping with best practices all over the world, um, protocol as is observed in Nigeria is not something that the Otom administration uh, wishes to identify itself with because we think it wastes a lot of time. And so, <clears throat> and so if I don't recognize the presence of very many important people here today, I just take it that it's not a slight on anybody, but simply a policy of the Otom administration. But having said that, let me recognize uh, the president of MUTA, a mutual union of the thieves in America, am I correct? Yes, Something like that. <laughs> and of course, to recognize the presence of my very highly respected elder here, former governor of the state, an elder statesman, General Tongpara, and um, the deputy speaker is here, uh, who has come along with me, as, uh, and then my wife, Honorable Justice Mary Abono, um, as uh, the official delegation of government to this year's uh, conference of MUTA. The majority leader of the House of Assembly is also here with us, um, Barista Dany is seated there. Can you get up, let them see you? Uh, the deputy speaker is there, James Okefe. And then, of course, we have um, a special advisor, um, architect Joe Kiagba. This is just to let you know how important MUTA is to us as an administration. We have another member of the contingent of the delegation, uh, former or retired Director General, uh, <laughs> the, the, the Deputy Controller General, Nigerian Customs Service. Um, I think one or two others that I'm not seeing here now. Aha, uh -huh, my Oga there. <laughs> and then you too. <laughs> uh, it looks like uh, this guy is not here. Uh -huh. uh, the president of um, Zotiv is also is on the government team. Um, anyway, so distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know officially that um, I am in my capacity as the Deputy Governor, leading the state delegation to this year's conference of MUTA. Um, and I want to let you know and to express uh, uh, the message from the Governor of the state, Dr. Samuel O'Tom, that ordinarily he would have wished to be here himself, but you know, is a new administration, and we are taking off with very many teething problems. And so he couldn't possibly leave the state at this point in time. So he asked me to lead this delegation. And that is why he's not here himself. But he hopes, as he told me, that he would personally be present in next year's conference. Yesterday, um, with the belief that I, poss I might not be here because I had some problems with my visa application. I think those who put in the application um, mixed uh, some issues and the American embassy was not, uh, uh, or had, uh, didn't want to grant me a visa. Um, 
on a diplomatic basis. And um, they said Muta invitation is like a social event and therefore was not an official one. And so they couldn't give me visa on a diplomatic passport. And so uh, we wasted some time. Uh, and um, I had to get a new invitation uh, as a business trip. And only then a uh, visa was uh, granted to me at 2 o'clock Nigerian time yesterday. And then I had to quickly rush to Lagos from Abuja in order to catch a direct flight here so that I would not miss today being the last day. Otherwise, I would have loved to start with you and, and uh, conclude with you. But um, that's the way God wanted it, and um, we are happy to be here with you today. I was made to understand that, uh, perhaps bearing in mind that the possibility of my not being here, uh, Professor Ogba did address you yesterday on... Uh, a few issues concerning the way government is being run at the moment. And uh, I want to stand by everything that he told you yesterday. And I am here today to receive or to entertain and address any issue or issues that might be arising from whatever he's discussed with you yesterday. But having said that, I want to touch on um, the five pillars upon which the Ottoman administration is built and would be run in the next four years. We have areas of, uh, of uh, priority as far as the government of Ottoman is concerned. The first one and the most important to us is good governance. Because if there is no good governance, no matter uh, the, um, the, the, the areas of governance you put down, you will not achieve anything. In Nigeria, planning is not the problem. If you look at the planning right from the state government to the federal government, you can hardly fault anything in it. Beautiful plan, but the problem has always been with implementation. And one major reason why implementation has always failed is lack of good governance. And so, as number one priority, the Ottoman administration has decided that the watchwords are going to be good governance. Good governance would be, would start with the fear of the Lord. Because if you don't fear God, you are likely to act with impunity. And so many things will go wrong. We've seen it in the recent past. When government was being run as if it was a private enterprise. And government money was like personal money. And whatever, whoever was at the helm of affairs wished to do with it, that's exactly what he did. And because the fear of God wasn't there, if anybody raised any voice against any terrible thing that was being done, he, that person was dealt with in a very vicious manner. This we, or Tom and I, decided we will not do, and we'll put a stop to it. <laughs> Our campaign was hinged and anchored on God. And so anybody who was in Nigeria while we were campaigning and saw our posters, our billboards, our leaflets, Whatever we, message we wanted to convey to the voting public, the heading was, in God we trust. And in God we trusted, 
from the beginning to the end. We had no money because we were not in government and we had not stolen money. We had no thugs that were used to beat people up and force them to vote against their wish. We were not bribing people because the money wasn't there anyway. But we had one thing in abundance, the goodwill of the people of Benue State. And we had another thing in abundance, beautiful messages that we were conveying to the people. And those messages were hinged on change, change of the old system, change we wanted to bring about in order to clean and cleanse the decay of the system in government. And the people, through God, in whom we trust, we trusted, bought those messages and voted overwhelmingly for us. So you can now see why we are talking about fear of God. In spite of what happened, in spite of Togri, five people were shot dead in Logo. And a lot of people were maim maimed. Others were tortured mentally and physically. A lot of money was spent against us. So, but we won with a difference of 109,000 votes. There can be only one explanation. And that explanation is God gave us this victory. And we therefore cannot let the people of Benue down with bad governance. Because if we do, we will be letting down God himself. And that's why we say, number one, good governance. Good governance, of course, entails integrity of the people at the helm of, affair, at the helm, helm of affairs. I, I we're therefore talking about Tom and myself. We're talking about transparency, because in whatever you do and you're not transparent, then you are not ruling, because whatever you do, the people you are ruling must know. So we are preaching transparency. In Benue, a lot of things had happened that were not in conformity with um, co Peaceful coexistence. God put us together. The Thieves, the Idomas, the Igedes, the Nifons, the Tulos. If it were not God, we would not be together. And therefore, we need to bring about reconciliation and give a sense of belonging to everybody that is of Benue. And a host of other things like that. Because we believe that once you have those, and then the, of course the fear of God, if you have those factors in place, then good governance is inevitable. Second area is education of our people. Benue State has been known to um, over the years, to be second only in Kwara during the Sardana days, as far as the northern Nigeria was concerned, in education. But I think now one cannot even say we are second to any, any state in northern Nigeria. So it has been the tradition of Benue to educate its people very, very well. But education in the, rise, in the right direction is what matters in the 21st century. It must not just be education just like that. It must be now in the right direction. 
And we think that the right direction is science and technology because that is the only thing that can bring about meaningful development of our land. And so we are going to concentrate on science and technology education. And in doing this, we are going to enhance the state university, which is the Benue State University, to perform more and to provide and to, to um, churn out um, very highly skilled graduates. You must be all aware that um, before we came in, the university had been on strike for a good number of months because salaries were not being paid. But as soon as we came in, we, got, we engaged the union of the university and looked into their problems, not just salary alone, but other emoluments. And um, as of today, I, uh, I am happy to announce to you that um, we've been able to clear the salary areas less two months only. <laughs> On the basis of which, we enter into an, entered into an agreement with them to clear the remaining two months in the shortest possible time. And with the bailout that we are hoping to get from the federal government, perhaps anything from the end of this month, we are likely to clear the areas of the university. <laughs> On the basis of that, the union agreed and called off the strike. And so as I'm talking to you, the university is in full session. <laughs> Other higher institutions in the state, the Polytechnic and the two colleges of education, have also been given priority, attention. And um, the School of Nursing, which is uh, age long, has been there for years. Unfortunately, too, because of a lack of payment of salaries and other things like that, and inattention to their uh, basic requirements uh, that would allow the, the, the Nursing Council of Nigeria to give them full accreditation, they too had been closed down for a number of months. But uh, as of two weeks ago, we were able to satisfy all the requirements, and the School of Nursing is also open. By extension, we are also helping out with the well-being of the Federal University uh, in Makadi, that is the University of Agriculture. We cooperate with them, and the state government does a few things for them. Uh, so it is with the, the NKST University at Tumka. Uh, and so, but then of course, if you are talking about education, the fundamentals we also have to be looked at. And so you start with the primary school system and then the secondary school system. And the primary school had been in a mess for over one year. The teachers were on strike. And so we lost a generation of our children that are supposed to and, and actually that will eventually become leaders of the future, of uh, future leaders of our state. But then we came in and we paid a special attention to their problems. And um, uh, at one point in time, they were being paid half salary, half, and then later, nothing. But we have started paying, and we are paying full. And, um, and so the Nigerian Union of Teachers that went on strike have called off the strike. <laughs> so in effect, uh, in a matter of two months, We've been able to straighten out somehow, to a certain extent, 
the educational system in the state, and they are back, and we are back on our feet as far as education in the state is concerned. The third area is the health sector. Of course, we are all aware of the adage that health is wealth. And so the health of our people is something we are not taking lightly. Um, the teaching, we, we are one of the lucky states in, in, in the Federation that not only just have a, a, teaching, um, a state university, but our state university has a teaching hospital that is very well equipped, a very big place, very well equipped in terms of equipment and also in terms of human resources. Um, and then we have a federal medical center in Makadi. In addition to that, we have the state general hospital. In fact, uh, two general hospitals in Makadi, one in the South Bank and the other one in the North Bank. And of course, we have general hospitals in uh, uh, these, uh, significant areas, you know, the local government headquarters and so on. And so, Health is an area we intend to look at and take proactive measures in order that some of the debilitating effects, especially of infectious and contagious diseases, will be curbed. Uh, just last week, I attended a meeting on behalf of the governor with um, the director of the Centers for Disease Control that came from this town. You know, the Centers for Disease Control in America is in Atlanta, Georgia. And they, they came over with the chairman of the Presidential Task Force on uh, Diseases in Africa, a uh, retired uh, Ray Admiral. And they came with a strong team and Benue State was one of the four states that had a meeting with them. Uh, the idea is that um, HIV AIDS, for instance, that had a devastating effect on Benue State. At one point in time, some years back, we were number one with the prevalence rate of HIV AIDS in Nigeria. But uh, the Akume administration did a lot of work. And um, honestly, pardon me, but I, I didn't know much about uh, Suswam's administration, but his special advisor is here, and I'm sure they must have done some good work as well. Uh, as a result, the, the rate of prevalence is down significantly. Um, but then, amongst the states in Nigeria, it's still not very comfortable. And so, this administration has decided a lot of emphasis must be placed on this. And we had a very useful uh, meeting with the CDC and the Obama Presidential Task Force on Diseases in Africa. And we entered into, we had a memorandum of understanding uh, with the idea that the American government that spends the largest amount of money, the, their contribution is the highest, uh, you know, into uh, control of contagious diseases and infectious diseases, not only in Benue State, but in Nigeria as a whole. One of the reasons of my coming here today is that on Monday I will be in the state of Maryland and I'm going to hold a meeting with the Lieutenant Governor of that state. And the idea is that they are going, they are going to um, come to our aid in the health sector and also in the agriculture sector. Then, agriculture itself, uh, as far as sustainability 
of our economy is concerned, we think that agriculture must be given number one place. Benue is an agricultural state. Benue has a expansive land that is very fertile. Many years back as a commissioner, I hosted a team from uh, Israel. And I was taking them around from Boko to Makadi and then from Makadi to Uukba. And everywhere we passed, their leader kept wondering what we were doing with the oil money. He said to me, Benue State doesn't need the oil money. That all you need to do is to develop your agriculture. And the state would survive. <laughs> so we came in now. And we said, number one, we must develop our agriculture so that it becomes mechanized in the true sense of the word. We've been paying lip service to mechanization of agriculture. We think this must stop. And real action must be taken. And so while in Maryland, I am also going to hold meetings with agricultural concerns. Whether they are that uh, we will go, we understand they have a, they have a policy, a government policy. And, and I think four states in Nigeria are already enjoying it. And these states are in the south of the country. So we see no reason why Benue State cannot enjoy it. So I'm going to hold a meeting with them on Monday. And um, they are going to help us. Because what we are looking for is direct foreign investment. And where it is a grant, we thank God. But where they are willing, we will do business with, with them as partners. And so we are going to, do, to, to develop our agriculture. But mechanized farming alone is not enough. Even with the little we are doing in the traditional way, we have a lot of crops, especially the fruits, that are just decaying and wasting away. And so, in order to add value to the primary products of agriculture, we think and we believe that emphasis must be placed on agro-based industrialization. We need to preserve our food items so that they don't rot away. We must add value to these primary products of agriculture. And that means the only way out is to establish industries using agricultural produce and products. That in itself is a very big issue for us because, I mean, in terms of advantage, we believe that if we go into this and do it very well, it will give us a major area of employment of our youth. These industries are going to be categorized into micro, small, and medium. Micro would be virtually family-based. In other words, a family, a man and his wife and children, grown-up children, at their backyard can establish a micro industry that can process some of the agricultural products and then pass them on to the domestic market. And by the time you have a good number of them and the products become plenty, we can also be talking about sending them to the international market. We've seen this done in India. We've seen this done in China. And I, uh, I, I think I'm happy to tell you that 
while we were waiting to be sworn in, the governor swung into action and through a private uh, contact, went to China for two weeks and, saw, and studied what I am talking about now and went into MOU with some uh, companies there and were already studying what he went there to study with a view of implementing same. Then, we believe that for, for the effectiveness of any plan that we have, unlike what used to happen in the past when we have beautiful plans and then the implementation goes wrong, we must emphasize private sector driven economy. And I suppose my standing here to talk to you, is it this afternoon now or this morning? Uh, this morning. It's, well, not mainly, but uh, one of the major areas is where I am now. I think that MUTA is an organization of the thieves of Benue State. And I believe that all members of MUTA have the love of their home state at heart. It doesn't matter that you live here and probably will live here for the uh, better part of your life. But I believe deep down in your heart you are always thinking Benue. And I am also sure that some of you will get home, return home, and uh, be part of the development strategies of the state. And therefore, it doesn't matter that you are now in diaspora. I think it is extremely important that you need to partner with the state in order to develop the standard of living of the lesser ones at home. One way you can do this is through direct investment. Some of you who are businessmen here and have the wealth with all can equally come home to invest and use your, ex uh, your, your expert knowledge from the advanced world and from where things work properly to educate our people and get things done the right way. On the other hand, even if you don't have enough to invest, but because by virtue of your uh, link, link with some people, some investors here, I believe you can also try to get them and convince them to come home to invest. The Autumn administration, knowing that one cardinal policy is direct foreign investment, is aware of the need to have security in the state. Because without security, nobody would want to come and invest in the state. And so, We're taking this most seriously, most seriously. Um, about a month ago, we decided to grant amnesty to the notorious criminals in the state. I happen to be the chairman of the amnesty committee. And the idea is that Yes, we have law enforcement agents, agencies going after them. But as you very well know, we have not had wonderful successes with their efforts. And so we've decided to use the, the approach of carrot and stick. And we are starting with the carrot. 
As a result, we have, asked, we have given a deadline of the 31st of this month for anybody who is on, in unlawful possession of weapons to submit them to government. And anybody who brings in an automatic weapon is going to be rewarded with 100,000 Naira. If you brought in anything less than that, which is semi-automatic, which is uh, rifles, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, shotguns and so on, will give you 50,000 Naira. And if you brought in locally made weapon, will give you 20,000 Naira. And other offensive weapons like uh, knives, uh, machetes and so on, uh, we'll give you 10,000 Naira. <laughs> so, uh, and to a certain extent, to a certain extent, it has started yielding fruits. Um, quite a number of people have uh, brought in weapons. Uh, some of them, of course, uh, we, uh, some were unserviceable, so I think some people were taking advantage of, of uh, the offer, so they will bring in unserviceable weapons, but we still receive them, and uh, the serviceable ones, we also receive them. And, um, but then we said, we announced to the people of Benue that after the 31st of this month, Anybody who doesn't bring in his own government is going to go after that person. The idea is that in the past, in the past, government had paid lip service. And we also discovered that government officials were behind the arming of some of the youths and therefore protective of them. But we will believe in God, and we will never do that. And so anybody, anybody who doesn't bring in his arms, well, the good thing is police knows where they are. But the police were helpless in the past because the leadership was not sincere in their quest to put an end to crime in the state. But now, things have changed. Change has come. And we are going to do it the proper way. The bottom line, of course, is that without proper security, nobody would come to invest in the state. And without investment, the state will remain where it is. And so, I think I have virtually covered the five areas. I've talked about a partnership of international investors, and that is something we are counting on you to also help us with your links in America and elsewhere in the advanced world to come to Benue to help us. So, today I'm here to felicitate with you, take part in your conference, and um, to let you know that I'm an Idoma man, but I'm also a Tiv man. And an, an Id a Tiv man is also an Idoma man. Because we cannot do without each other. And it doesn't matter. Uh, whoever we are, whatever we are, we need to be our brother's keeper. And we need to support each other. If the thief man is wealthy and he brings investment into Benue, he would not say the, uh, the products of that investment must be consumed only by thief people. I think I'm right. Uh, so we need to support each other. And I wish you the very best. 
and I wish you a stronger, a much stronger association and uh, leadership of MUTA. Um, to this effect, um, as I was coming, I spoke with the governor that there is a need. Uh, even though I'm sure Professor Obama have told you yesterday that the treasury we met was not just an empty treasury. And my Oga, in those days when he took over, <laughs> he was reputed as having made this statement of meeting empty treasury. Ours, sir, is not empty, not just empty. We met a deficit treasury. And I can explain to you in just a few minutes. When we came in, uh, Suswam had taken a bond um, and he had paid some of it. But as at the time we took over, there was 9.2 billion naira outstanding that we needed to pay. That's already negative, isn't it? It's not just empty treasury anymore. It's now negative. And as we took over, the salary arrears that were being owed came to a total of 18 billion naira. 18 billion. And then the contracts or jobs that had been executed by contractors, for which, of course, the state government is liable and must pay, came to a total of 50 billion. And of course, it doesn't stop there. Some contracts that had already been awarded and perfected, legally speaking, which therefore bind the state government to comply. Uh, went up to about, anyway, all put together. As at the last uh, contact, as at the, the, um, uh, the, you know, the, we, we put in place uh, what we call the transition committee. I think uh, Professor Gba talked about it yesterday. What they had discovered so far puts the total liability of the state to slightly over 100 billion. So, we need to come from far behind to zero level before you talk about empty treasury. And that means that, uh, I mean, if we had made empty treasury, we, would not, but we wouldn't be worried at all because we would just be thinking of how to make it positive. But now we have to think about bringing it from negative to zero before you, we talk about positive. So, um, yeah, you're right. Um, the president is reminding me about pensions. One major area is pension. When we were campaigning, the uh, channels television did a documentary on Benue, and they interviewed a number of people, indigenous of Benue, and the one that caught my attention, because I watched it from the beginning to the end, was the contribution of a pensioner who sat with his wife. And both of them were contributing. They were being asked questions that they were answering. And the wife also is a pensioner. And the interviewer asked him, how he felt or what he felt about the fact that pensioners were being owed 11 months uh, their entitlements. And the man was very quick in answering. He said the government had condemned them to death. And the interviewer asked him why. And before he could answer, his wife was the, was the one that answered the question. And the lady said, why not? My husband and I are condemned to death because 
from 65 and above, you don't live by food alone again. In fact, food is less than medicine. He said, my husband takes eight different types of medicine a day. And I take six. And we don't have money again to buy the medicine. Isn't, doesn't that mean that we are condemned to death? And it was as if ice water passed through me. So when we came in, as a priority, we decided that even if we are dealing with the workers, uh, we must also pay special attention to the plight of the pensioners. As a result, we've been able to clear a number of months of the areas, and we have made it a policy that while we are still owing some months, we must never fail in the payment of their entitlements starting from the month of June. And we have kept to that. Uh, Tuesday last week, Tuesday last week, today is uh, Saturday, Tuesday last week, people started receiving their alerts of payment of their entitlements and also of salaries. So I think it is important that I also clear this. But the point I was making before he brought that was that even though we're in a terrible financial mess, but as I was coming, I told the governor that there's no way I would make this trip without any level of support to Muta being a very, very, very important segment of the Benue society. And so I, but I was made to understand that uh, a certain figure was announced to you yesterday. I think it said $5,000. But um, I told the governor that uh, that doesn't sound too well in my ear. So, <laughs> so I, I got him to approve 2 million naira. And the 2 million naira, when converted yesterday, uh, thank God um, uh, there, was, uh, they, 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 there was a crash on the dollar because uh, it was, as at that time, it was 245 naira to a dollar. But the central bank governor was summoned by the president four days ago, and also by the Senate. And, and that resulted into a crash. And as of yesterday, it came down from 245 to 220 naira to a dollar. And so yesterday I bought, I used your 2 million naira to buy dollars at 220 naira, and it came to 9,090 dollars. Uh, and so um, I handed over the money to Akita Jokyagba, and so he's going to give you now, he's going to go to the president, $9,100. That's the money, Mr. President. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, my friend, because if I hadn't said this and I sat down, I would have been very sad with myself. <laughs> the government of Otom, uh, well, not Otom, the Otom administration is very, very gender sensitive. Uh, we believe that judgment by women can be very sensitive and very correct. In most cases, women take decisions uh, very rashly and very hurriedly. Uh, it is when we get home and we begin to tell our wife, tomorrow I'm going to do this, I'll take action and I'll deal with it. And it's then my wife will say, hey, hold on, hold on, take it a bit easy. 
And, and, and at that time, he w she would not say anything. But when we are in bed together in the night, then she would say, hey, listen, this thing you were talking about in the afternoon, why don't you look at it from this perspective? And it is then that the thing begins to sink. <laughs> Uh, and so with that background, um, we decided that women will form a substantial part of this administration. <laughs> and so we decided that um, uh, of the four commissioners per zone, where possible, one must be a lady. And we also said that of the local government chairmen, um, a certain number must be ladies. <laughs> and, and so on and so forth. And uh, we are very, very, very sensitive to the plight of women. And we are engaging them in the running of the administration. And so, Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are here to wish you good luck and to be supportive to you. Don't hesitate to let the government know whatever we can do at our level. But we are depending on you and hoping that you will come to our aid in order that our land and your land will be greater for the inhabitants of the place. Thank you and God bless you.